Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Noble Discussion with C3 Films. My name is Chris, and this is... Cheryl. And today we're going to be talking about Loki Season 2, the very first episode. There's only one episode out as of now, so spoiler alert for that episode, and there's a chance that we'll probably talk about some aspects of the of Season 1 of Loki and possibly Quantumania, just so you guys are aware. The after credit scene of Quantumania might be discussed. So if you haven't seen any of that stuff and you want to go see it, go check that out and then come back and see what we got to say on the show. But let's go, let's go ahead and jump right in. So... I, for Loki, I think that it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Like, I I think that the episode was, like, it had some funny elements to it. Um, I love seeing Owen Wilson. I think Tom Hiddleston is still, like, great in the show. The music in the show is also very good. It's wacky. It's zany. It's weird. Um, they added... Um, oh my god, I think his name is K. Hugh. I might be mispronouncing his name. K. Hugh Kwan. Um, one of the guys from, ironically enough, uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once, which is another story, story about um, the multiverse. And so then they came and they got him in here as well. And just, I think that the first episode is a lot of setup. Uh, so it's like, I think it's setting up for like what it should be an intriguing season. Um, by like kind of dealing with kind of the fallout from like Sylvie killing um, the the Kang. one who remains. Yeah, it's Kang, but I forget what he called himself. The one who remains or something like that. Uh, something. Um, the last but, man yes. standing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> standing. <laughs> that's what. <laughs> that's what he said. But yeah, so like I think that um, so it's it's mainly dealing with the fallout of that, and then we start to just see. Um, something that's happening to Loki where he's kind of getting displaced. We find out that he's getting put back and forth between the past and the present of the TVA, which um, they said should be impossible because time works differently there, but he said, no, it absolutely is. And they're contending with the fact that they don't want to prune any more timelines because of the fact that they themselves are variants that have been plucked from their lives and then put into, and had their memories erased and have been made to operate in the TVA. So that's essentially where they are in this first episode, and they have to go on this little mission to try and help Loki to stabilize him in the current present, and they're, the way they have to do that is dealing with some like past and present shenanigans, which leads to some funny moments. Yeah, I mean, at first I was having a hard time kind of remembering the first season, even with the um, with the the recap uh, mm -hmm. montage, um, which helped a lot. Uh, I think I really needed that, but I think I needed a little did. bit more. <laughs> it's, it's been like two years. <laughs> yeah, it's an, and um, actually, Loki was our first um, television show that we did on uh for c3 films because before that we were only doing movies and after oh. i watched season one of loki or like the first couple episodes mm -hmm. i pitched to chris that i really wanted to do tv shows like start incorporating tv shows because um i watched loki and i just really wanted to talk to him about it and so that's how we started doing our um uh it, we started incorporating tv shows on our show because of loki so um that yeah, I mean, I, f I forgot how good it was, actually, uh, season one, because um, of how long ago it was. And so when I went into watching the first episode of season two, I was just kind of, my expectation was so low for it. Because, oh God, yes. like, like, you know, we said so many times about, like, how much of a drag Marvel is, and, like, someone in the comments mentioned that Marvel is homework, and it really is, because mm -hmm. there's just so much of it out there, and, like, you need to watch, like, so many things to understand um, something, but I think Loki is actually not too bad, because you don't really need to have seen Ant-Man, it's not necessarily connected to Ant-Man for the series so far, um, otherwise, you just need to know who Loki is, and if you don't know who Loki is, then, well, I can't help you, because I don't know why you're watching this show, then. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching a show called Loki, but you don't know who Loki is, 
Um, but otherwise, it seems like it's a very like the the way it was established seemed like it would be independent, like it could just be its own thing without any dependence on any of the other Marvel series. Seemingly, yes. except for I was now. Gonna, well, well, I was gonna say that I think that the other Marvel series will depend on Loki. On Loki, actually. exactly. Yeah, but like that being said, like if you didn't want to watch the future stuff, I feel like that could be doable. Um, just seeing like how it's going so far. Although I know that they're making a Kang coming up, so um, we'll see how that goes. But going into it, it felt good because Loki felt very independent of everything else. And I think that's part of why I liked it so much. Um, but like this first episode, I, I think I agree with you. Um, there was a lot of setup. It did take a, a little bit to like get going. But when it finally did, I actually like found it really entertaining i thought it was a great first episode for a season two um mm -hmm. like i think they did really well with that uh as far as like keeping up with like just being good content um it wasn't like the best thing i've ever seen of course but um but i think it held true to the quality of season one so I there's a consistency that. there um and I mean, Owen Wilson is just a lot of fun to watch in general. And I think he did a very, I think his character is really good where it's like outside of the typical roles that Owen Wilson usually has. He's like, it's different for mm -hmm. him. And I think he does great with it. And I like seeing that. And then I was mm -hmm. like, um, excited to see, I was like, oh, hey, short round. And <laughs> just funny because I was talking about Temple of Doom um, earlier in the day. Um and um, I really loved that scene. I love the way they cut it, the way they wrote it, the way they edited it. It was great. So, like, I was very pleased with the creativity that they had with the time slipping and, like, you know, OB remembering stuff in um, the future or, like, in the present because Loki slipped to the past and was like, okay. Yeah. And I liked how they used that conversation where it was fun, but it was also a tool to push the story it forward. Was. So True. I thought that was a great scene. I thought it was super creative to get the story moving along but still being very fun, really, really well written and really well edited. Yes, that's an interesting thing because we were just talking about Ahsoka not too long ago, um, and we were talking about how you were mentioning how like there's a scene where there are these people talking and they're just kind of giving exposition, and the exposition is meant to give us information that we need for moving the story forward, but it's done in such a a, ben a benign and like like boring way that it doesn't hold interest or like really even make it so that you're remembering what they're saying. But you're right, this was a good way of basically giving information because we are learning about what is needed in this story, but we're learning about it in a creative way because we're jumping back and forth between two different conversations and how the one conversation is changing the knowledge of someone in another in a different conversation and then it's just and it becomes more funny as well as fun so yes you're 100 percent right on how this is a good example of progressing your plot and giving information but giving it in an interesting way that'll get your audience to pay attention yeah and plus it's just fun i forgot how funny Loki was actually now that I think about it like season one was pretty funny um and I don't know it's just kind of excited to see a new character too um and then the other thing that I noticed about it and it kind of distracted me a little bit but I saw like a like a graininess a familiar graininess and then I realized they shot this on film they yeah. didn't shoot it digitally mm -hmm. and I don't know if they did that for season one but that kind of excited me because I was like, it looks great, actually. They, they, it, they did shoot this on film? I didn't know that. They did. They shot it on 35. Wow. Yeah, like, look wow. again. You can see the grain, especially <laughs> when the background is white. And then after I noticed it, I was like, I can't believe I just picked that up. <laughs> I can't That's believe cool. that I noticed that they shot this on film. And then I went and looked it up and confirmed it. 
That's really cool. Yeah. Like, I know, and I'm, I'm recalling the fact that I saw what you were talking about because I'm recalling the grain, but I didn't put it together. They shot it on film. I felt like that was just like an effect they used. So yeah, that's what I that's what I thought. I was like, wait, I see graininess, and I was like, but what's the point of it? Like, what's the purpose of it? And then I was like, huh. And so I looked it up, and I was like, they shot this on film. And, you know, when I connect the dots, like, I can entirely see why they would have done that. Because, like, as you know, part of the um, the design for the TVA. TVA is mm-hmm. old school. So I think yeah. that's a really great choice. So these kind of, like, little details, like, you can really just see the, the care and the thought that they put in this that they don't do in the new star wars stuff and that's the thing like that's the disappointment there um Mm -hmm. but then when you see something like this where you can see how much they think about it and like these little tidbits that things that you probably wouldn't even really notice um Mm -hmm. like you can really you can tell from like seeing it as a whole because when i watched the first episode of loki i was like it feels good to watch this because i feel like you know this is good i'm entertained nothing's making me angry i'm not upset like i'm just enjoying watching this and then when you really look at it you're like oh they put a lot of thought into it right. and you can't really tell but like if you're just sitting there and you're just enjoying it and you have no problems you're not going to notice anything negative and that's when you get upset right so right yeah, no, it's true. And like, I came off, I watched this coming off of the season um, finale for Ahsoka. So I was also came in with low expectations uh, for the. Plus, I haven't really been impressed with Marvel stuff recently. I haven't, I never finished watching Miss um, Marvel, which I don't think is a bad show. It just wasn't for me. And I never finished watching, I never even started watching She Hulk. So, like, lately I just haven't been watching so many sh- these shows and I haven't had the same level of excitement for them as I used to. So watching Loki kind of felt like a thing of just watching it because it was a new thing that was coming out and we would talk about it on the show. So I was like, fine, I'll watch it. And when we, But when I did, I was pleasantly surprised to find that I was actually enjoying it. So, yeah, like... I said that it was fine, which I still think it was fine. There wasn't anything that blew me away, but I had a good time while watching it. I wasn't upset, like you said. It was interesting, like you said. It it was it was fun, um, and I'm just kind of intrigued about where the story's gonna go. Like I did enjoy not only that conversation where they were going back and forth in time, but also him going back and forth in time within like the conference room of the TVA and realizing that the the wall had been changed and then showing them what was underneath that wall. Like, I think that this show was doing a good job of really positioning Kang as, like, a problem. Like, and I think that's what I really like about the first episode the most is the fact that there's all these, like, hints and these, like, moments where they're just kind of really, like, they're really beating it into you that this guy is going to be a problem. Like, this feels, like, if we hadn't seen Ant-Man, this feels like a proper villain introduction where it's just like, this guy is coming, and he's not only coming, but he's he's here. He's, like, he's the reason that you exist. Look at this. His face is all over the place. Who is this guy? Why don't we remember him? Like, all of that stuff, that's fun. That's, like, that's creating some intrigue. That's getting me involved. That's making me want to see where this is going to go. Um, and... The tie-in with the Ant-Man Quantumania is only the after a credit sequence where there's a scene with Loki and Mobius. I think that's um, Owen Wilson's character name. but And they're looking at um, this guy who's supposed to be another variant of Kang and like what looks like the past or whatever. And I'm guessing that scene is one that we are going to build towards within Loki Season 2. So... We'll see if we actually end up there. So that's like the only potential spoiler is just that that's a scene that we haven't seen yet that's probably going to happen in Loki. But if there's anything that Loki has been doing right for me right now is the fact that I feel like I'm having, I feel like I'm being, I'm really being led to believe that this guy is going to be a problem. So I'm hoping that that remains true. Yeah, I think the setup is good. Like, they really do um, make him seem menacing, but then you also, like, there is, like, a level of mystery, and I think that's kind of, like, the stakes do feel like it. they're already high. 
It's mm-hmm. like season two starts with high stakes, and I think that, um, I think that's what drew me in so quickly because, uh, like, you, despite the setup, I think it, it still felt like there was a sense of urgency because it starts immediately after season one ended. Right. So and it and season one ended with a cliffhanger, and so we're just picking right back up where we left off. So I True. thought that was interesting, and then there was also like there's a problem as well because that they have to solve in this episode, which is that Loki keeps slipping from mm. different uh, time periods, which he shouldn't be able to do in the TVA, by the way. Which is that something they also mentioned. So yeah. it's not just that he's slipping, but it's like, why is he slipping in a place where you shouldn't be able to slip? Yeah, and they and at first I was like, wait, this doesn't make any sense. But then they they actually intentionally address it, so it's not a mistake. It's part of the story. So um, that's the other thing. Or like before, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, and I think like they did a great job with, um, like, because you do see Kang, you've seen Kang before from season one briefly, so it does. It's I don't know. It feels appropriate, like the build up. Yeah. Like you still like it was introduced. This character was introduced, and now we know he's a problem, but he's not an immediate problem he's a later problem and so there's right. it just feels like the setup has balance like we're going to be working up to a showdown later right so and yeah so structurally i feel like i know where i am i don't really know what words like i know where it's probably going to end up mm-hmm. but the journey is the mystery and i think and obviously the journey despite what people think is the part of any story that is going to be the most interesting. So I feel like the way it was set up was excellent because we're being set up to have a journey. And I think... Agreed. Um, so it makes me look forward to watching the rest of season two. Agreed. Yeah, and the other reason that I'm personally wanting to watch is just because I'm kind of curious what they plan on doing with um, Kang as he's portrayed by Jonathan Majors. Like, for those of you guys that no there have been some problems with jonathan majors in the media and stuff like that so there wasn't there were some questions whether or not he would still be playing kang or going forward and stuff like that but based on this first episode i'm not sure if this was filmed before all that stuff went down or whatever but he's all over it his face is everywhere and they're not trying to hide him so i'm and like i said he was at the end of quantum mania but they already had filmed that before that stuff happened so i'm really curious to see what is going to happen with this character um in this show and if they'll like if they're going to just go about business as usual or if they're going to pivot because of the things that have happened it's not and like i said these are all stuff that's external to the show but it has the chance of affecting the show itself so that's another thing that at least as an outside influence uh, exists above the show and i'm kind and i'm curious to see if it will trickle down and actually have any kind of effect on the storytelling of the show itself yeah no it should be interesting i don't think i would mind a recast because even though they used him already in a bunch of stuff i think it's still doable it is because we have we're no, it's also a little weird that um he's the only variant that's the same right because every other variant looks different that's true well like at least that we've met like loki had a bunch of different variants and none of them look like him for the most part or many of them didn't look like him yeah so it's kind of weird that all of kang's variants were exactly the same guy yeah i mean they had different outfits but but it's true like as in in a universe where they set up you know different uh like there's a multiverse and stuff like that people can be different so i think there is space for a recast here yeah if they decide that that's where they want to go mm-hmm. so we'll see if that actually happens but yeah that's everything that i kind of have to say about it like i don't really have much to say about the first episode of loki it's not bad i think that it's fine like i said i think that it sets up where the future is going for the show i did have i will say i will admit when the first episode ended i did have the feeling of me wishing that there was a second episode already like i wish that they did like what they did with ahsoka where they released the first two episodes i was like man i kind of wish they did that with loki um because i felt like that first episode left me wanting more but at the same time i also felt like that first episode wasn't enough 
Um, so, yeah, but that's probably a good thing. That probably means that the show is getting the show is overall getting me captivated and interested. Um, but yeah, but I do think that it's I think that it's off to a fine start so far. Yeah, and I know like I, I honestly I don't have like very much hope for Marvel, even <laughs> though like Loki has a good track record. But considering the fact that, like, Kang has um, something in the works in the future, and he was also in uh, Quantumania, like, makes me feel like there's potential for Loki to not be a great story anymore. Mm. Um, And I think part of it is because I realize now that it's not going to be independent of everything else. It's going to tie into other things. Uh, It already kind of has. And even, like you said, uh, that other things are going to be based on this show. I think that um, I don't think that they're going to end it before the next things start. So I think they're probably going to run alongside each other. And because of that, I think towards the end, it's probably not going to be very good. But we'll see. I've appeared in wrong before. Andor was good. So this could be the Andor of um, Marvel. Marvel. Yeah. And, you know, when we when we get to the end, we'll come back and we can talk about it and see if uh, your feelings change. If you look at my first review of Ahsoka and then you look at my last review of Ahsoka, they are very different. So yeah. anything can happen. <laughs> anything can happen. We'll see how it goes. Um, I can just start to pretend things don't exist again, uh, but we'll see how how it goes in the future. And, um, the first season was six episodes. I don't know how many episodes. Probably going to be six again. I just canceled Four. Disney Plus, so I don't uh, know if I'm going to be able to watch this again. But hopefully, um, in some time, we can revisit and do um, a, another uh, episode for the whole season of Loki, not just episode one. Yes, exactly. Uh, we'll see how we can go over to someone else's house and watch it. But um, but yeah, like, is there anything else you want to say before we get out of here? Uh, no, that was it for me. All right. Well, that's what we thought about the first episode of Loki. It's not um, not a bad start so far, so we'll see where it goes. But what did you guys think about Loki? Did you enjoy it? Are you excited to see where this is going to go for season two? Or are you kind of feeling like you're like some of the rest of us where you're just kind of done with Marvel, they're beating you up too much, and you're just moving on? What have you thought about this and more? Comment below. Let us know. And where you're down there, if you give us a like, share, and subscribe, even if you don't, though, I have been Chris, and this has been She Who Remains.